A friend asked me regarding my thoughts about a certain video. While it was loading, I could already tell na mahaba yung video na yun. It was about 1 hour and 40 minutes. And I told him na, sige, I'll check it later. And the next day, I did watch it. It's a riveting story. Still up to now, nasa tending pa rin siya na page and all related videos on YouTube. To those who haven't seen it yet, please watch it. Yes, I'm talking about the documentary, Give Up Tomorrow. Hello Beshies! I'm RVT, a Pinay Christian vlogger, and today I'm making a reaction video. Nako, sa mga Beshies dyan na hindi pa nakakapanood ng Give Up Tomorrow, if you think na yung mga Korean dramas lang or yung mga soap operas, yung merong ganoong um, plot or twist, then think again. You're wrong, girl. Eto, parang sometimes as they say, mas strange pa talaga yung reality than fiction. And this is one of those cases. So in a gist, Two sisters went missing in July 1997 and seven boys were picked up as a consequence. Sila yung naging suspects and later on they were convicted for the special complex crime of kidnapping and serious illegal detention with homicide and rape. So here are my thoughts on this video. Parang hindi ko siya hinimay-himay but using uh, perspectives from both sides na parang I think to myself na um, they could have done better. So yung una <laughs> Ito talaga, medyo natawa ako. When I was watching this with my friend, yung, yung part na yun na pinakita yung Photoshop na evidence na sinasabi ng prosecutor, ng lead prosecutor doon na it's an altered evidence. Kasi nung the picture, in that picture, I'm gonna show it, kung nakikita nyo yan, sabi niya kasi altered siya because the seat that Paco is sitting on is black tapos yung mga kasama niya is white tapos is not looking in the same direction kung yung head niya so it was kind of funny for me na it was thought of as a photoshop evidence I don't know if that time meron ng photoshop and the other but the other picture na yung sinasabi na um, accompanying doon is yung kasama niya was also sitting in a black chair so I don't know why the court thought that that was an altered evidence the second thing was the lack of cross-examination. Yung kay Davidson Russia, um, sinasabi kasi doon na he wasn't feeling well. So he wasn't subjected to the cross-examination. Of course, by the defense. Medyo unfair lang na he wasn't um, cross-examined by the defense. Kasi, syempre, prosecution lang yung nag-present sa kanya. And they would understand na lahat ng testimony niya, of course, is magpapabor doon sa... Um, doon sa side ng prosecution. There's a, a video going around. It's entitled, The First Lie. Yung isang witness, yung si Aniseta. Because that, the investigation really started with her. Kasi, her, based on her affidavit, sinabi niya doon na nakita niya yung sila, yung mga suspect na riding a white van. Tapos, tinapon yung body. Tapos, meron daw narinig na sound. Tinapon yung body doon sa likod ng bahay nila. So, that video of the first lie, it was said there, she herself, parang she refuted her own testimony. Kasi sab sinabi niyo doon na, hindi naman ako marunong mag-English, pina-explain ko sa police na bakit uh, pinapapirma sa akin. Tapos later on, yun lang na-realize na yung affidavit na yun, it was prepared already ahead. And she just signed it without even knowing the contents of said affidavit. And I don't know why they weren't able to counter that. A fourth one that uh, was kind of um, weird na hindi rin na look into was the drug angle. Yes, if you've seen the video, you would see that there is a... Ayokong sabihing possibility, pero meron siyang drug angle na wasn't taken into consideration sa investigation. Pero right now kasi, you know where it was years and years back. The campaign against war wasn't as aggressive as ngayon. So it kind of makes sense right now to see or to look at that that drug angle, maybe compared sa that time. Kung isipin mo, the daughters went missing at the time of the hearing, yung magta-testify sana yung father nila sa hearing ng alleged drug lord. So parang... Hmm, it's something to think about. This one is the missing body. There was really no positive identification ko talaga si Mary Jo yun. On the other hand, hindi na nakita yung missing body ni Jacqueline. So, kumbaga, there was no corpus deliti. So, parang, that was answered actually by the Supreme Court in their decision. 
sinasabi kasi doon na there was enough investigation done by the investigator already. Tapos na-identify talaga na siya based on her, the fingerprint on her voter's ID and the fingerprint sample taken from her corpse. So, yes, that was answered. But yeah, there are still unanswered questions. The, the last point, mara- maraming pa talagang pwede maging point. Pero ito lang yung sa side ko, yung nakikita ko. And the lack of the credibility of the statementness. Now, I'm saying that just because questionable your character more, you cannot be a truthful witness. I'm not saying that. But kasi, he was a convicted felon and he was had a past gang affiliation, particularly the Crips. Now, I didn't know anything about the Crips. Dalawa pala sila, um, Bloods and Crips. They're like a huge gang in the U.S. Na talagang notorious. <laughs> yun siguro yung ano nila, notorious talaga yung Bloods and Crips na yun. So, the state witness, David in Russia, was actually part of the Crips gang. While I'm not saying na hindi siya credible, kasi he said that he partook in the crime, eh, so he um, confessed to that. But, I don't know. There was so much credence, I guess, given to his testimony. And I'm also wondering, bakit napaka-chummy ni Mrs. Chong sa kanya? I cannot judge her, of course. Maybe she has a very forgiving heart. So yeah, it just makes me wonder. So, no, it's a Supreme Court ruling naman. Well, of course, Supreme Court isn't a trier of facts. It's really left sa lower courts kung... Ano yung magiging decision nila? Kasi the lower courts have the ball talaga eh. Kasi they are the ones na nakikita yung witnesses and they can see sa posture, sa gesture, sa facial expression, sa tone of voice, sa manner of speaking, whether or not they can gauge in a way, the judge can gauge yung credibility, yung sincerity, yung truthfulness na sinasabi. So the Supreme Court only has to yung stenographic notes to rely on. So... Meron, yung bola talaga sa lower court. So, pag sa lower courts pa lang, pero dehado na yun, medyo dehado na yung kaso. And then, sa Supreme Court ruling, it was, um, I don't know if it's sad. I'm, I, kasi I'm not really choosing a side. So now, tingnan ko naman yung side naman ni Paco. Incriminating naman talaga sa side niya. The first one was when the Supreme Court and the lower court found na yung logbook entries niya sa, I believe, sa school niya sa Manila, appears to be sandwiched between two entries. So, parang it was just written, maybe like an afterthought or maybe as an addition. Hindi siya yung parang nasa line talaga ng notebook. I think that was one of the basis din ng Supreme Court na incriminating yung sinasabi niya that he was there at the school at the time of the crime. He had a previous record kasi of abducting a woman. It was written. Na blatter talaga yun. Um, I think if I remember correctly, yung sa record talaga ng Supreme Court, months before the abduction of Mary Joy and jo- Jackie, um, meron nang nag-complain. Binabasa ko ngayon dito. Yeah, there was an attempt to snatch their daughter and it happened near the gate of the of Rosha's school, showing his impotence. So, kumbaga he had a past record na ginamit in a basis ng court in his conviction. The, the third one, the basis din na sinasabi ng Supreme Court is that they failed to establish by clear and convincing evidence that it was physically impossible for him at that time to be at Ayala Center, Cebu, where the Chong sisters were abducted. So, yes, even if the family already showed them the... Uh, airport records na there was no record of him traveling but i don't know it was yeah there was that evidence of no physical impossibility and the thing is kasi meron tal- meron kasing mga witnesses that time na nakita na andun talaga si Paco at the time of the crime sa Manila and there is even a video um, made by the same filmmaker na yung ini-interview yung isang lawyer na si Garcia si attorney Garcia na why would I lie? Diba? Why would I lie about his presence? Parang sa akin, parang, even just hearing him, it, it was very unlikely talaga na he would lie. Kasi, as he explained there, anak kasi siya ng mayor nung time na yun eh. He has so much to lose and so little to gain in making up that lie. Kasi, that time, there was really a public, um, the public favor was with the Chongs. Parang, it's so sad sometimes society will kind of be happy when 
someone rich is jailed kasi sinasabi nila na uh, he's not above the law. The rich kid cannot get out. And just because of that, there would be a presumption of guilt. So the other thing lang din siguro that was kind of sad and unfortunate na hindi talaga both sides hindi naklaruhan kasi that time they weren't CCTV eh. Hindi siya as prevalent as now. And also, there was really heavy reliance on testimonial evidence. Ganun yung, ano, yung forensic sciences talaga. Yun din siguro yung isang sad. Kasi, I don't know if it's because of lack of budget. Hanggang ngayon, hindi pa rin ganun ka ano yung forensic science natin eh. That's a, that's a really big progress na, na meron na nag-offer, ng school na course na nag-offer ng forensic science. Pero to this day, yung nag-testify doon na forensic scientist, I think that she's like the only one sa Philippines, si Dr. Fortune. So that's really sad. And then, if you didn't know, they actually showed um, yung si Dr. Raquel del Rosario Fortune. I'm reading from the Supreme Court na case na sinasabi dito na he, she wanted to testify na yung examination na ginawa ng prosecution expert witnesses on the body found in Tanawan Karkar is inadequate. But the Supreme Court said, hindi siya makaklassify as a newly discovered evidence warranting belated reception. Obviously, Laranyaga could have produced it during trial had he wished to. O, di ba? Hindi siya binigyan ng chance. I don't want to say anything against the Supreme Court because that is the highest court of the land. So, you always, you respect their choice, okay? Was there proof beyond reasonable doubt of kidnapping with homicide? Our justice system says yes. But the video, Give Up Tomorrow, says no. Siyempre, it couldn't be, I am not saying na yun lang talaga yung i-rely natin. Kasi if you don't know, that video was made by a family member of Paco. So, of course, they would tell their side of the story and after all, the filmmaker is closer to Paco. So, yung story niya talaga, yung mas makukuna, makukuna niya ng footage than other witnesses or other than the side of the prosecution, of course. I guess, I'm, I, I'd just like to say na at the end of this all, both families have suffered so much They've gone through a lot of ordeals and both of them lost something. And wala talagang nakakaalam kung anong nangyari sa araw na yun. Kung ano talaga or kung meron man. Alam mo yun, isa lang yung nag-testify, si Davidson Russia. At ang dami pa nga yung lumalabas ng mga conspirat- conspiracy theories na kesyo buhay pa yung sisters, yung mga ganun. So, it's really confusing the public right now. 21 years! 20, 21 years and the case is still gaining ground and gaining um, so much ano, so much attention right now because of Give Up Tomorrow and yun din sa movie ng Chong Sisters. So I'm ending this reaction video with three things. The first one is that research, investigate. Before making a conclusion, um, research thoroughly. Be not easily drawn in by touching stories or emotional appeals and or be drawn in collective hate against um, a particular person or group that can sometimes be so easy to hate. Kasi parang yun yung nangyari ng time na yun. In this age of fake news and trending hashtag and viral videos, it's so easy to join the bandwagon and feel safe in the numbers, in the hits, in being viral. But, you know, we really have to look at both sides objectively. As they say, there are three sides to every story. Yung side ng both parties. And then the truth. Which, this is really up in question right now. You know, question ng mga tao, what is really the truth? Respect the law of the land, that's the second thing. Yep, there's a caveat to that. Be vigilant, especially when it is being used to abuse those who are less fortunate, or yun nga, used as a tool of abuse by those in power. And I guess, don't let poverty stop you from being educated. Kasi iniisip po, like, if Paco came from a poor family, baka he wouldn't have been able to fight the death penalty. I, I'm, I'm sad, I'm sad to say that, pero that's a reality. But he is blessed with a family that's well-educated and you know, willing to really pursue and take action um, in 
sa rights niya that his rights would be siguro of fighting and being vigilant eh, both sides were very commendable and admirable in in their fights kasi I do believe in my heart na justice and fairness were their ultimate goals yung both parties hindi lang yung isang parties and they were brave enough to fight it the sad thing if I remember yung kay Paco na he said na he had the option to actually leave the country when he got out on bail, I guess. But his mom didn't allow him to. Kasi sinabi ng mom niya, you have to clear your name. You're innocent. Why would you run away? Diba? He wouldn't have suffered that if he, even if it was if he became a fugitive, kahit nang tatago siya, diba? He wouldn't have suffered that. Technically, prisoner pa rin siya sa Spain. And third, eto talaga yung, I think, um, most important point ko, there will come a day when everything that was hidden will be made plain. Yun yung assurance, I guess, na pag sometimes when the injustice and the unfairness in this world becomes too much, na we think only one side is being listened to, being watched, and being believed, there will come a day when everything that is hidden will be made plain. And if you don't know, in the Bible, uh, the word judgment appears for 285 times. It is no coincidence for me, it is no coincidence that this word is, was, and will be corrupted in this world talaga. So, world ta talaga natin yun. In this world of rampant yung sin and rampant yung sinners. But there is one whose judgment is perfect. One who sees everything and he can read even our hearts. So, wala talagang matatago doon. So, the assurance I would probably give to both parties and so iba pang na agree dyan. if they're both telling the truth from their end in being sincere in what they believe but there is only one truth diba and vengeance is his the lord's and the ultimate judgment is in him as well so if we believe we think that we don't have judgment yet in this world wala pang fairness there will come a time, I tell you, that's an assurance. So with that said, giving up tomorrow is not an option. That ends my reaction video. Comment below on what's your take on this very popular and very trending video right now. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe below if you haven't yet already. Just click the red button below. Stay happy, stay positive, stay blessed. Bye!